All right, so this week's episode is gonna be a little bit different. So for some of you that don't know, um, I work very closely with Do South and help them out with a lot of stuff. So this week, Meredith, who is Patrick's wife, um, the two owners of the fly shop, uh, she is about to have a baby. And it's coming a little early, and so they have a lot of trips out, and they're scrambling, and so they need me to run the shop some this week. So I'm not gonna have any time to go fish this week, but I still wanted to bring you guys an episode. So this week I'm gonna be doing a gear review. A lot of you have asked like, what rod, what reel do you use? Like what's that pack and everything? And I'm gonna kinda of get that out of the way and show you guys all my gear and show you some of the camera gear that I use. Just so you guys can get a little feel of what we use and just like my opinion on all the gear and everything. Uh, so if you don't wanna watch me talk about a bunch of gear, then feel free to just head on out and wait till next week. But if you do, stick around, it should be fun. I'm gonna show you guys um, everything I use. So uh, that's that. I told you guys I'd be putting out a video a week and sometimes you just gotta roll with it. So that's what we're doing this week. Um, and yeah, enough of me talking, let's get to the gear review. All right, now we're here in my apartment. We got some ratchet ass lighting going on right here. Uh, it is what it is. I don't really get any natural light and it's like midnight right now. Um, so I'm gonna be using some really bad lighting. So you guys can judge me in the comments if you want. Uh, but anyways, we're going to dive into the review. I'm going to show you guys some of the camera gear that we use. I'm going to show you uh, my rod, my reel, and all the stuff that I use uh, when I go out for like a typical trip. Just so you guys get a feel of what I'm using and why I use it, basically. So yeah, let's uh, get into it. Alright guys, welcome to this week's episode. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not able to get out and fish this week. I'm currently working two jobs and then had to work at Due South to help them out uh, at the fly shop. Like I was saying, Meredith is about to have her baby, uh, so things are crazy up here and they need some help and so I was so down. But today I'm gonna be going over all my gear and what I use, why I use it, uh, and I'm excited to kind of show you guys because I've never done anything like this and never really shown y'all um, specifically like my gear uh, and everything. So I'm gonna start out with rod reel setup and that whole deal. So, oops, so what I got, rocking right now this is a uh, this is my go-to setup this summer um, this is the Orbis super fine carbon uh, seven and a half foot four weight absolute butter stick this is probably my favorite rod uh, I think I've had this rod for almost two years now and I love it for all the wild streams I fish um, all the videos that you've seen of us fishing for wild trout in the, in the smaller streams I'm always using this rod and then with this rod I got the Orbis Hydros reel uh, it's the reel that was before the new Hydros uh, SL or whatever. Uh, I got it like right before, but this thing's awesome. It's held up and I've loved it. The drag system's great on it. And then for Flyline, I have the Orvis HD Trout. Uh, it's getting a little old, so it's starting to crack a little bit, but I just haven't upgraded yet. I mean, it still works, but I definitely need to upgrade my line um, here in the future. Uh, one of the things I found with you know investing in a nice little fly line is that made the biggest difference when it came to um, when it came to my casting and it came to my fishing abilities was the fly line over the reel. Um, you can get you can get an okay reel and put good fly line on it and you're gonna do really well. Uh, that's just something I've figured out and I think a lot of people will tell you the same thing because it is true. All right, so let's go into leader. I know you might have seen this leader before. This might be familiar. This is the Appalachian Furled Leader uh, from Appalachian Furled Leader Company. This is the Blue Line Leader. I'll show you guys this one right here. I love this leader. These guys reached out to me uh, let's, maybe like a year or two ago. And so I had seen some of my videos and wanted me to try them out. And so they sent me a couple and I've been using them ever since. Uh, and you know, a lot of people or like, you know, what is this whole furled leader thing? What's this braid thing? And I asked them even, I was like, what is this whole thing? Like, what, what's the deal? And, you know, he, he kind of explained it to me and then sent it to me. And I was going to do a video right away, but I hadn't used it yet. And now that I've been using it for a year or so, um, I can tell you that this is an awesome leader. It has saved me so much money. So basically what it is, it's a furled leader. Uh, it's braided. I'll take it out of here really quick. So it just unwinds like that. So yeah, it's about like yay long, it's like 36 inches. And this is the blue line leader. This is meant for your smaller streams, shorter rod, and like smaller fish kind of thing. So this is what I've been using on all the small streams on this seven and a half foot four weight. Uh, so basically you have your loop to loop connection which you connect to your, your fly line like you would normally. And then you have a little tippet ring at the end. And the tippet ring is where you add your tippet. Uh, so I remember the days, I'm sure most of you guys are the same way, but you know, you go to a fly shop when you're about to go fishing and you get a three pack of real leaders. 
Uh, real leaders are great. <laughs> Love those leaders, but you know, when it comes to it, every time I was going, I was spending 12 to 15, 20 bucks on leaders every trip I was going. For this, I haven't, I haven't changed my leader in, in almost a year. You know, it's, it's ridiculous. Like, all I have to do is get Tippet. I just get new Tippet, and you attach, you know, about 36 to 70 inches off of this, however long you want it to be to your next fly, and you're, you're good. That's all you got to do. You can literally tie 6X off of this. You can tie 5 to 6 if you want. I usually just do 5 to my dry, drop 6 to my dropper. Um, but, yeah, that is the reason that I like this leader so much. It saved me so much money. Uh, being a college student, not having much money, living the trout bum life, like this is the way to go. Um, you know, I'm not paid <laughs> or anything to say that. I, uh, I honestly just love this leader, and it really has saved me a lot of money. Um, and I hope it can help you guys too. So if you haven't already, check it out, Appalachian Fraud Leader Company. Uh, they also have an all-purpose. They have a bunch of different ones. This is the all-purpose uh, for your nymphing rig or whatever. So, yeah. All right, my next rod, I'm not going to open it up, but the Reddington Crux. We did a review video with Due South on the Reddington Crux. This is a 9 foot 4 weight. So, this is my delayed harvest stick. This is my Tennessee stick. Anything bigger water is, I'm using this. It can turn over nymph rigs really well and also throw dry flies like a freaking beast. I haven't made any Tennessee trips. We're planning on it, uh, just hadn't had the time to make it all the way up there. Uh, and as, if you saw last week, we did make it up there, but it started raining, and so we couldn't fish. So yeah, now I'll go into the pack. <laughs> so this is my Gale Force Orvis pack. Uh, just kidding, this is not mine. This is Shane's. Uh, my buddy Shane's, I've been borrowing it all summer. Hopefully he forgets one day, and I'll just call it mine. Uh, so if you're watching Shane, oops. It's waterproof. Perfect for holding the camera, perfect for holding my phone and any in my keys or anything else I need to put in there. You know, a super cool pack, I'm gonna tip it and everything. But I do want to get a sling pack here eventually, which will be which will have a little bit more room in it to hold camera gear and other stuff. But for now this is great. It does a trick and I can put everything I need in there and I'm usually good. So next thing I'll go into if I'm packing a little bit heavier. If I'm packing a little heavier, I have this Orvis backpack, which you may have seen on my back. I don't know the exact name of it, but I got this uh, last year or something to hold camera gear and anything else. I can throw my lunch in there. I can throw a water bottle on the side, and I can sling my net through. Uh, opens up just like this. Usually put all my GoPro stuff in there. Got a good amount of space. Uh, it's like water resistant, it's not totally waterproof, but for me it does everything I need. That's my backpack. I love this thing, and it's really helped me manage my space a little bit better. Now, now we'll go into uh, the net. So this is, uh, this is my catch cam net. These guys are a new company, I think they started about a year or two ago. Uh, the owner, Bo, reached out to me back when they were starting up and kind of showed me everything about the net. and wanted me to try it out and so I was all for it. It's got this awesome American flag handle which I love and you know the cool thing about this is it has a GoPro mount built into it and I know a lot of people are like oh but like you could just put a GoPro sticky mount on your on your fish pond or on your net and you're right you can but this thing is in there solid and the sticky mounts eventually do fall off but overall really good uh, GoPro mount hold right here you can get those really cool angles or whatever. The main thing why I really like this net uh, you know, the GoPro mount is really cool, but you're not going to have your GoPro on there every time, especially when you're just slinging in your back. It's, it's kind of weird to put on. So um, what I saw was really cool, and what sold me was this, the interchangeable handle. All right, so you can take the handle off, and this makes it very easy to carry. I can throw this in my backpack. Literally, if I wanted to go on a plane with this net, I can throw it in there just like this. And the other thing is on their website, they sell longer handles, which are like guide handles. And so let's say... You know, you're a fishing guide and you just want to go locally one day. You just have this handle on. But let's say, you know, the next day you want to go up Tennessee and you want to, you want to float or you're guiding or something like that. Um, it's got the option to buy another handle that's longer uh, that you can screw in and then you can take it out and put the other one back in. 
So that was really cool. And there's also so many different designs on their website. They just came out with a new series. I'm really pumped. I'm going to try to get one here soon and see how it is. So the new net that they have, the new nets they came out with are a little bit lighter is what I've heard. Uh, they got some different designs and everything. And so I'm excited to try those out. Uh, they have some really cool patterns, some really cool new designs for it. Um, so yeah, but that's the net. All right, so next let's go into uh, waders. So these are the Orbis, the Orbis Silver Sonic waders. Um, it's not the guide series, but just the, the, the basic Silver Sonic ones. Uh, these, I, I've had these for probably two or three years now and have had no complaints. You know, I've, I've grown a little bit, so they've gotten a little tighter, but I got them with a little bit of growing room so that I'd be able to grow into them and, and obviously I have. But these, these, have, these have been awesome. I mean, they're super warm in the winter. You just gotta bundle up a little bit, but then they also are able to breathe when it comes like summertime and, and spring. Cool thing about these is the convertible top. So basically, your top comes down just like that. So in the summer, if I'm wearing waders, I usually wear it low like this. But yeah, these are uh, these are great. I think they're snake proof. I don't know. Haven't haven't run into that, so I hope hope we uh, don't have to answer that question. Silver Sonics, love these things. You know, I've I've had these for three years now and haven't even considered buying new waders. Uh, so I, I'm gonna keep it that way. And then these boots, these are Orbis. Uh, I like Orbis. Uh, if you can't, if you can't tell, no, yeah, I really like Orbis. Uh, it's probably one of my favorite fishing brands. But anyways, these are, these are either the Encounter or something, or the Clearwater, something like that. The tag is like faded, so you don't even know. But pretty good boots. Uh, they ripped right here. <laughs> but I'm still using them. They don't stick as well as I'd hoped on rocks. That's just because it is rubber. Um, I got these, you know, I had felt before which are great, they just got too small. And I was like, oh, I wanna try the rubber and I was gonna try the spikes. I never got the spikes, I'm so lazy, I just didn't get the spikes. I have to have a little extra step in there on some of those slicker rocks just uh, so you don't fall and bust your ass because that's no fun. We've all been there though. Especially when you're holding camera gear and shit, like you don't wanna drop that. <laughs> like it's terrifying crossing some rivers uh, when you know you have some camera gear in your backpack or you got in your hand <laughs> for sure. But anyways, I, I like these boots. They're ripped. I think I'm going to upgrade here pretty soon. Uh, I just don't really have the money to buy winning boots, which is fine. I still enjoy these, um, which is fine, uh, which is fine. I, I literally wait in Chacos like half the time anyways, which also are way more slick than these, so I don't know what I'm doing, but Chacos are just so easy to slip on. That's the one thing. So that's all my fishing gear. Uh, I will say here one more thing. Uh, so Tuck Fly Shop gave me this a couple years ago. Shout out to Bobby and Dale. These guys are the homies. You know, those are the first guys to kind of reach out to me after I started making some videos. Uh, they've been huge supporters ever since. So those guys, great dudes. If you're ever in the Silva area, Bryson City, check out one of their shops, Tuck Fly Shop. Anyways, uh, the bag zips open just like a like a taco, like, a, like that, and you're able to throw basically everything in there. You all zip it up, and so you have all your stuff here in like one bag just like that, and it gets pretty full. Um, I don't use it as much now just because I'll just leave my rod in my car and I'll let all, everything like set up, but if I'm gonna travel somewhere, like this is the go-to. Uh, when we went to Colorado and we had six people fitting into a Honda Pilot, I had to fit my stuff in, so this was uh, a lifesaver and came in and saved the day. Uh, but yeah, all right, enough with this. I'm gonna switch over and talk about some camera gear for a little bit because I know a lot of you guys are always asking questions about camera gear. And I'll just get that out of the way and kind of explain some things. And you guys can see some of the stuff that we use. So now that I've talked about uh, my fishing stuff and kind of some of my gear that I use, I'm going to now go in, transition into uh, some of the camera gear I use. But let me say something really quick before I go into talking about the specifics. Uh, you know, if you're out there and you're, you're looking for a new camera or you're trying to start making videos, the one thing I tell people is do not worry about what camera you're using. If you're starting out, you're starting out, you have to start somewhere. Everyone has a freaking cell phone. Everyone has a smartphone in their pocket. Most of them shoots 4K, 1080p video. That is freaking crazy if you think about it. When I was growing up and when I was getting into this stuff, I didn't have a smartphone. I had a little flip phone or whatever and a little tiny mini action camera. So 
just think you have a very nice camera right in your pocket. Uh, you know, content over quality. In my opinion, that is the biggest thing that matters is the content of your video. I've seen so many cool videos out there with these little tiny point and shoot cameras, but the message of the video and the content of the video is just so cool. And they have such a good story and it's planned out. Uh, and then you see these really high quality videos shot on YouTube or whatever, and but they're just, they're just not that good. They're, they're very high quality and the, the picture looks great, but the video itself is just not a good story. And if you're out there, don't get discouraged about, you know, you don't have the nicest camera or whatever. Like we surely do not have the nicest camera out there, like not even close. You know, we have very entry level cameras uh, on what we use, but how we've improved quality is figuring out how to use those cameras uh, through manual settings, through you know, figuring out little tricks and stuff to the camera that, that you can get the maximum potential out of. That's that, just kind of take that into consideration. It doesn't matter the camera you're using. I'll show you what I am using, but don't compare what you guys are using like to what I'm using or, or whatever. At the end of the day, a camera is a camera. Some will shoot better than others, but it's still a camera. But yeah, anyways, so let's start out because drones are cool. We have the GoPro Karma right here. Um, this is a sweet drone. I used to have the Phantom 3, which was a great drone. I love DJI. Nothing wrong with DJI. I got a killer deal with this, and the main reason I got this was because of this bad boy. And this is called the Karma Grip. This comes with it. So basically, out of the front, if you guys are familiar with this, uh, you just pull it out of the front and slide that right in there. You lock it and boom, you got a handheld gimbal. And uh, so some of those smooth shots you've seen, uh, that comes from this, the GoPro gimbal, the Karma gimbal. Um, super badass, love this thing. I mainly got it because I wanted to shoot skiing videos uh, and then the drone quality was really good because I already had a GoPro and I wasn't using it. And I was like, how can I utilize that more? I paid money to get that GoPro. You got a killer deal in the Karma and this thing's been great. Is this a long-term drone? No, I don't think I'll have this that long, but for now this does everything I need it to do. And you know, the video quality is really good. It shoots 4K, you can shoot 1080p and 120 frames a second, get some slow-mo, which is dope. Wings flip in, just like that. Super compactable, um, thing is sweet. Uh, and then let's go into the camera because everyone asks, what camera do you use? And I will now tell you guys. And so for those of you guys who have commented, um, I'll be answering those questions. So this is uh, the Nikon D3300. Super entry level camera. You'll probably get this for like $300 on eBay or something like that. You know, main reason I got this was because it shoots 60 frames a second in 1080p. And that is, uh, that is killer for getting those slow motion shots that you've seen. Not many other cameras at this price point on the market are gonna give you 60 frames a second at 1080p. So that's what I love about this. Right now I got this 12 to 28 uh, wide angle lens that I'm borrowing from someone. Um, I've been using this a lot to do the vlog stuff because it's so wide. I've also been shooting on a friend's D5300, which is just a little bit upgraded version of the Nikon. That's the one that has a flip out screen. But yeah, so that's the camera. You know, shoots shoots pretty good video. Uh, there's not much room for editing the color and, and whatnot, but you know, if you're looking for an entry level camera, the D3300 is a really good one to go with. Uh, just my one thing is just like figure out the manual settings. You know, I, I first got this camera and I would just use auto settings and it, looking back it just looked so bad and the lighting was off the exposure was always off so you, learning the manual settings has really you know excelled the potential for this camera um, to its like max all right and then shotgun mic so we shoot off this Tacstar SG something uh, this thing is like $30 on Amazon and honestly in my opinion this sounds just as good as a Rode mic I don't know why you'd pay that much to get a road mic. In the last video, we, we had a little fall. I fell and the log snapped and camera had a rock. Uh, luckily, only this broke, which is just what mounts it on the camera. So I'm gonna have to replace that. I think I'll be able to figure it out. So now I'll talk about the glide cam. This is what we use to stabilize all of our footage, all of the DSLR footage. And so basically what it is, you got plates right here and you have this middle section. You have this handle that goes all the way around and then you got your plate up here is where you mount the camera. Uh, you put it in there. And so, you know, when we're, we're walking through the woods or whatever, try to get those really clean shots, you put it on there, balance it out, 
that is how you see those gimbal like shots that uh, we might have gotten. Um, you know, this is like something that you got to have that like ghost walk or whatever. You got to be very light in your feet, and it's something that you cannot just pick up and just start shooting and your stuff's gonna look like great. You know, you really have to practice. And I've used this for over a year now. Still getting better at it, still getting the hang of like balancing it right. But for the most part, I've, I've learned how to use it and it's been really good so far. So yeah, that's the glide cam. But yeah, so that's my gear right now. I'm sure I probably forgot something, but for the most part, that's what I use. That's, that's my fishing gear, that's my you know, camera gear and everything right here. Um, and you know, obviously we don't have these big fancy lights or whatever for, for shoots and all these this big fancy gear. Like I'm literally using a lamp to like light this, which you know, it might not look that great, but for now it's like what I gotta do because I'm in my apartment and there's no natural light coming in. Um, a lot of stuff we do with this, you know, is run and gun. Uh, you know, I don't like to be too complex with carrying my gear and, and going out and shooting be uh, because it can become a pain and if you have too much out there it's just like overwhelming and you feel like you need to use everything but you don't yeah and then so really quickly to talk about because i know a lot of uh because i know some of you guys have asked you know what do you edit with and everything and i want to do a separate video on that but i do edit with premiere after effects um although adobe suite though that's what i use i edit my photos in lightroom you know i'm still trying to figure out all those programs I used to use Final Cut Pro, which was great, but now I'm using the Adobe Suite, and I love Adobe. There's there's a lot to it, especially Premiere. There's just so much you can do with it, and I haven't even learned half of it. Uh, it's a whole other language, but that's what I edit with. If anyone even cares, uh, it's a dope program, but don't expect to learn it right away in like a couple of days. Um, uh, the last thing I want to leave you guys with is just some really quick is that everything that I've learned. Uh, camera wise, drone wise, you know, glide cam, all this stuff, you know, managing files, editing and organizing and all that has all been on YouTube for the most part. Uh, you know, I've learned a few things here and there from people that I've talked to and everything, but going on YouTube, going on the internet, figuring out all this stuff is, is how I've learned everything. You know, I'm self-taught. I, I didn't go to school for any of this. I don't plan to go to school for any of this stuff. I just love doing it and I have a passion for it. And you know, if, if you spend some time, you know, going out and, and practicing this stuff, you know, going on YouTube, you know, look this stuff up. Like anything you want to do these days, literally you can just go on YouTube and find it, you know? So I think that's super cool. Our generation is so lucky that we have all these resources to figure out this stuff. You know, if this is something you want to get into and you, you're hungry for it, uh, just just go do it, man. I mean, like, this stuff's fun. Don't do it, don't do it for the views. Do it because you like to do it. That's why I do it. And you know, why I even do any of this is just, I just like love sharing my passion for fly fishing. I love sharing my passion for the outdoors with you guys and with the internet. You know, I don't care who watches it, but you know, if someone finds some enjoyment in watching some of these videos and us sharing our passion and you know, you getting into fly fishing because you've watched videos like this or something, you know, that makes my day. That, that's what it's all about. And I will take that over a dollar any day but yeah, that is the gear review. Uh, thank you guys for watching. What is this, episode four, I think? Yeah, episode four. Uh, sorry there was no fishing. You know, really wanted to have some fishing in this, but this week we just did not have time. But I still wanted to put out a video for you guys. But yeah, enough of me talking. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Get out there this week. Go fish. Go do something outside. Get off your phone. But most importantly, have fun doing it, and we will see you next week.